Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday morning to you. Welcome back to a normal schedule after testing week. So I'm glad to see everybody. Hopefully those of you who tested it went well and we're done. We're over with it. And so um, we can now move on. We can't see me, Kaylin. Okay, so Kaylin, that could be um, neuro situation. So go ahead and log out and log back in. Okay, sometimes it, 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 it was giving me trouble before. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here on the brain stretch. Thank you so much for going ahead and getting your answers up here. Again, it feels like an eternity since the last time we even touched this, since the last time we even did this, because we've already had, we've been like, it's been like almost, almost two weeks away. So using the periodic table <clears throat> or ptable.com to identify what names of the atoms are in this compound. And then we're going to actually look at how many of each atom do we have in this compound? Now this compound is um, phosphoric acid. So we're going to look at each and every one of those different um, elements. So the first element is H and yes, I agree with that one. H is going to be um, hydrogen. And then we have to take a look at this little number right here, which we call a subscript. Um, so a sub that subscript there is telling me that I have three hydrogen in this compound okay so i have three of these hydrogens in this compound next one we're going to take a look at p now p is phosphorus now remember what we talked about is that if we do not see a little number next to the um, element symbol then we can assume that there is only one an excellent job here one of this particular element we cannot say that there are zero, and that's the biggest mistake that I see a lot of times with students, is that we tell us that it is zero phosphorus. No, because if there were zero phosphorus, then we would not see phosphorus at all, okay? All right, Kaylin. Um, is anybody else having trouble seeing me? Not yet, not yet. So everybody's having trouble seeing me? Yes, okay. Okay, well then let me go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come right, right back, okay? Cause I'm gonna come out or come back and come back in. So um, this is going to be tricky, love Nero. So I'll be right back. Now can everybody see me? Are we still having issues? Is it better? Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. When I was logging in, it was giving me so much trouble. So it totally could be my, my end. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Kaylin. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. The next one is going to be O and O is going to be the symbol for oxygen. Correct. And if we take a look at this little number right here, it's going to say that we have four oxygen in this particular compound. And that is absolutely correct. Now, remember a chemical formula is like the direct ingredients for making a recipe. And our recipe is phosphoric acid. So those are the ingredients we need in order to make phosphoric acid. All right, excellent. So let me go ahead and grab your notes for today. And I will put them into the chat box there. There we go. Go ahead and start opening them up as I. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Evelyn. Oh, and I I'm and I totally was like, oh, my hair is like icky. All right. Well, thank you. Now you made my day. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. Remember, Class Connect sessions are recorded and distributed for learning purposes. Please do not put any personal information or information of others into the chat box for your protection and the protection of others. Make sure, sure you're school appropriate and respectful at all times. And again, like I always will tell you until the very bitter end, which we're getting close to, which is scary, is make sure you're participating. Not necessarily a huge problem here in this class, but continue doing what you're doing, participate. And again, if you're very shy and you don't, you're like, oh, I don't like participating, use that question and answers box. That comes directly to me. So you will, um, again, be participating and you're wet, okay? So keep it up, you're doing an excellent job. So let's take a look at our calendar. Welcome to week seven of our 12 weeks together. Again, we are moving along very quickly. It is day 33 of our 61 day adventure. We've already hit the halfway point. So we are now going downwards towards the end of the trimester. So it is Monday 
April 29th, and we are going to be taking a look at our first type of bonding, which is going to be ionic bonds. All right, so let's take a look at the big picture here. So on Friday, before we left for state testing, so not this past Friday, but the Friday before that, we were introduced to the inner, our Unit 3 article project. I did get some of those turned in during state testing. I've got those graded, and so far, so good. Everybody has gotten a really decent grade. Unless you're not following directions, there is no reason why you shouldn't get a very good, decent grade. So just a reminder, that article exam is due Thursday, May 9th. So coming up, it will be a week from this Thursday, which is plenty of time. Again, depending on how fast you work, it could take you up to 20 minutes or less. Um, just again, how depending on how fast you work. Like I said, unit three is on bonding, a lot of different types of bonding, and we're gonna take a look at that first type today. So with that being said, let's take a look at what we're doing. We're gonna review and calculate the overall charge of an atom cation and an anion, or explain how ionic bonds are formed and explain how metals and non-metals actually lose and gain valence electrons. Some of this stuff is going to be reviewed, so we're going to be moving through fairly quickly. All right, so with that being said, here we are at the magic slide. I'm going to go ahead and give you all just about another 20 seconds to get this one up, 20 seconds up on the clock. Raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. I'll give you a few more seconds here while I um, just take a look at the last minute of those of you who are just coming in. Perfect. All right, so still looking for um, Zidane, Kitaly, Valerie, Taylor, and Maya. Uh, Mariah and Luis, Logan and Lizzie, Jasmine. And Jasmine R. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, Alex and Chris, Elijah, and yes, keep on Jason. Make sure we get those hands up there. Excellent job, everybody. Thank you so much there, Elijah. Thank you, Jasmine R. Thank you, Maya and Logan. Nice job, Alden and Cadence. Excellent job. Again, last call, Alex and Chris, Gavin and Jason, Jasmine L, Lizzie. Luis, Mariah, Taylor, Valerie, Kitaly, and Zadine. Make sure you get those in there. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Nice job, everybody. So the first thing that we're going to look at is obviously kind of brainstorming what we have learned in Unit 2. So electrons have what kind of charge? Who could tell me in the chat box? What kind of charge do electrons have? Yeah, good, Connor. Yeah, good, Hope and Chloe. Absolutely. So electrons have what we call a negative charge, right? We know that um, just by looking at the picture, we know that these electrons floating on the outside of the nucleus have a negative charge. Good, Jackie. And we know that protons have a positive charge. And then these um, kind of sea green looking guys are going to be those neutrons that have no charge whatsoever. So when we go ahead and take a look at everything, if a neutral atom gains electrons, then it should become what? What kind of charge? Now, remember, think about electrons as being those negative friends in your life. If I'm going to gain more negative friends, what kind of charge am I going to have more? If I'm going to gain more negative friends, am I going to become more negative or am I going to become more positive? Absolutely. Yes, yes, excellent. Yeah, we're going to become more negative, right? Now, same goes oppositely. If I'm going to lose those negative friends, am I going to become more positive or am I going to become more negative? Yeah, absolutely. Good, Michaela. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to become more, more positive. Kind of, I mean, you really can think about it in that way of, you know, negative friends. We've all had those situations in which we have those negative people in our lives and they kind of make us feel a little bit more um, negative when they're around. But as soon as we get rid of those negative people in our lives, we start becoming a little bit more positive and we're a little bit more um, kind of happy. Okay, that's kind of how you have to think about it here when we talk about um, electrons. Excellent job. So. We know that we will become each one of those. Well, how does that all be, how does that interact with when we talk about electrons and ions? Now, again, this is review, so I'm gonna quickly go over this stuff.
So we know that atoms are neutrally charged. They have both equal amounts of protons and electrons. Okay, they cancel each other out. Remember, protons are positive, electrons are negative. So if you have equal amounts, they kind of cancel each other out. Now what happens though, is that sometimes we have more of each. And when we have more of each, then we all then we become an ion. Now an ion is simply an atom's overall charge. Now remember, electrons are negatively charged. So if we have more negative electrons, then we are going to be, my atom's going to be more negative. If I have more positive protons, then well, my atom's going to be more positive. Kind of that's how it works. Now, how do we figure out the charge? Now, remember what we talked about this, and we did this in our unit two exam, is that we add the proton charge plus the electron charge. Remember though, the proton charge is positive, and the electron charge is negative. So we're gonna have to use our integer rules. And we're gonna practice that right now. So let's go ahead and um, practice this right here. We have an atom with an overall charge, and we're gonna gain electrons. Now the protons stays the same because again, the protons are the identity of the atom. So if I keep the same protons, but what's different is my electrons, then we're gonna go ahead and figure out this overall charge. It's pretty easy. Remember, eight is always gonna be positive because positive protons, but then our nine is actually going to be negative because nine, or since it represents the electrons and electrons are negatively charged, it's gonna be a negative nine. Now, this step right down here is literally a just moving down of the numbers. So I'm just gonna move down these numbers. I really kind of just took it out of the parentheses there. Now I'm going to subtract nine from eight. Now here's where the integer rule comes in. I could do it a couple of different ways. Obviously, I grew up all the way from kindergarten to know that we always put the bigger number on top. Okay, so I can go nine minus eight. Okay, so when I go nine minus eight, I know I have one, right? But I have to come back here for a second because I'm dealing with integers, then I'm gonna have to take a look. Which number is bigger? Is it the eight or is it the nine? And in this case, I know the nine is bigger. So I would then take that, that negative sign and bring it to my answer. So I would get a negative one. Absolutely, Kaylin, nine, yep. So I would get a negative one. Now, that's one way to do it. There's all these different ways you can um, figure this out. You can actually punch it into a calculator, eight minus nine, it will come up with a negative number. You could also just kind of, you can see that, okay, you know that nine is going to be more than eight. So you kind of, and you could kind of do this mentally if that's better for you, or you could do it the way I just taught you. Either way works because they're both gonna come out to be a negative one. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the next one. Now we're gonna have talk about how we are going to lose electrons. Same number of protons, but this time I'm gonna have seven electrons. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in eight plus a negative seven because of the, we're dealing with electrons. And I'm literally, what I'm doing here is literally just taking it out of the parentheses. So I'm gonna put eight down here minus seven. Now this one is done like we have learned, oops, that we have learned in since kindergarten. We know that the bigger number eight is on top and then we just minus seven. When I do that, I'm gonna get a one. That's easy. I don't need to put a positive. I don't need to do anything. I know that because I have no sign next to it, I have a one, okay? Now, remembering number of protons is the um, identity of the atom. So which is going to be, what atom is going to be eight protons? Is it gonna be nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine? Go ahead and use your pointer tool to, for me and point for me, which element is going to have eight protons? Ooh, there's one little bee, two little bees out there. Ooh, I got three little bees, keep going. I wanna see some more bees. Ooh, four, maybe five bees out there. Absolutely, Kaylin, you got it. Yeah, nice job, everybody. Absolutely nice. Look at all the swarm of bees. I love it. It's going to be oxygen. Okay, good, excellent. All right, back to the honey hive you all go. So there is going to be the identity of my atom. All right, so now you got a couple here up here. You have two, 
three and four. Now, when you do these, um, these in your notes, you're going to literally just put a negative one for number two. You're going to literally just put one for number three. And I'm going to show you in just a second. And number four will be oxygen. Number four will be oxygen. So with that being said, I will give you 30 seconds to get that one in. In the meantime, I'm going to pull up my notes to show you all how to do it. But 30 seconds, raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. I'm going to go ahead and screen share with you so you can see what it looks like in your notes really fast. And then I can come back or just keep it up there. But that's what it's going to look like in your notes. You're going to have a negative one right here. You're just going to have a one. And then obviously oxygen with the atomic number of eight. I'll give everybody just a couple more seconds. All right, excellent. Good job, ja Jasmine R. So still looking for Alex, Cadence, Chris, Damian, Gavin, Jason G, Junior. Good morning, Junior. How are you? Uh, let's see, Lizzie and Logan, Mariah and Mateo. Good morning, Mateo. How are you doing? Uh, let's see, Taylor and Valerie, Kitali and Zadine. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Thank you, everybody, for getting that in there. Let's go ahead now and talk about the names of these specific atoms that have a negative, um, negative charge and a positive charge. Now, if you remember, the two names of their types of ions that we have is what we call a cation and an anion. Now, a new, neutral atom that loses those negative friends or those negative electrons actually becomes more positive. We know that. We've identified it. We've even um, calculated it. Now, we call these a cation. And again, like I told you before, how I remember a cation is I love my cat, Jammy Boy. There he is, all nice and regal. And so since I love my cat, Jammy Boy, he makes me happy. He makes me positive, And he's just a really cute cat, and I just love him. Okay? That makes me really, really happy. That's kind of how I think of it with cations. Now, thank you there, Nat. Now, if you're not a cat lover, I'm not going to hold it against you, but here's another way you could think of a cation. That T kind of looks like a plus sign, so that's how you kind of um, think of it. More protons than electrons. That's really what a cation is. You're going to have more positive protons, okay? Now, on the other hand, yeah, this, and you know what's funny? He's a lot darker than this. He, this is when he was like a kitten. He has like a darker chest and everything. So now flip side here, you have a neutral atom that gains negative electrons. Now, obviously, if you're going to gain more negative friends, you're going to become more negative. That's kind of how we think about it. And we call these an anion. I always think of the word anti. Anti has a real negative connotation, like something that's bad or, you know, we, every time we hear anti something, it's like, ooh, this is bad. So that's how I think of it. Okay, very negative. And it's just simply saying that we have more electrons and protons. All right, so we're going to now go ahead and do a three part. Let me see if I, yep, a three part. You're going to have an A, you're going to have a B, and you're going to have a C um, situation. This is going to be a complete on your own. So just kind of hold on here. Okay, so what is the charge of an ion with seven protons and 10 electrons? First of all, let me help you set this up. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is figure out the charge. I'm going to have seven protons and 10 electrons. Remember, when I take it down here, I'm just taking away the parentheses. So I'm going to go seven minus 10. No answers in the public chat. That's going to be for your A. B is, is this, is this going to be a cation right here or an anion? What's your answer? Is it a cation or an anion? And then what is the identity of this atom? Well, if we're talking about seven protons, which one here has seven protons? That's C, okay? So three parts here. I'm gonna give you all 35 seconds to go ahead and figure this out. If you have any questions, please let me know in the question and answers box. I do see people that have um, answers in there. You can always check those answers. When you are finished, please raise your hand. Again, this is a three part. The first part is your answer. That's A. 
Your second part is, is it a cation or an anion? What's your answer? Is it a cation or an anion? And then C is, what is the identity of the ion? Well, you have to figure out the identity by looking at the protons. All right. So 35 seconds up on the clock. Raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. No answers in the public chat. Uh, Nat, don't add. You're adding. You're, we're subtracting. We're always subtract. Okay. Kaylin, that is correct for A. You are going to be correct, Nat, for B. Good, Lizzie. That's correct for A. Hope that's correct for A. And Nat, you are going to be correct for um, C. It's just A that you need to redo. Connor, that is correct for A. Lizzie, that is correct for B. And Yami, that is correct all the way through. Jasmine L, you are close, okay? You're close, but remember that if my number is the bigger number, I take the sign of the bigger number. My integer rule, I take the sign of my bigger number. Good, Connor, that's correct. So cation, as remember, makes me so positive. Anion, it's kind of, it looks like anti, very negative. What do you think it might be there, Kaylin? Good, Nat, that's a good correction. That's correct for A, Nat. Um, Connor, that's correct for B. Cheyenne, that's correct for A. Yes, Jasmine, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Hope, that is correct for B. Connor, that is correct for C. Nicholas, you're correct all the way through. Yes, that's correct, Nat. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Hope you're correct for um, C. And Junior, you're correct for A. Nice job, everybody. Emmanuel, that's correct for B. Yep. Cheyenne, now for B, cations make me happy and make me positive. Anions kind of have that anti, have, kind of sound like anti, which is very negative. What do you think? Good, Jasmine L. All the way. Be careful with the last one, Jasmine L, with number C. I have seven protons. Remember, protons is the number, is the atomic number. Good, Cheyenne, that's correct. Good, Kaylin, that's correct. All right, nice job, everybody. I think you did an excellent job. When you are finished, though, just make sure you raise that hand. When you are finished, make sure you raise that hand. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So let's go ahead now, since we reviewed all of calculating charges, we reviewed the types of ions, and we actually reviewed um, the identity of the atom, which was all the way, way back in the very beginning. Let's now talk about the first type of bonding. Now, the first type of bonding we're going to learn is what we call an ionic bond. Okay. Now, an ionic bond is an attraction between a cation and an anion. Remember, we talked about this in physics, opposites attract positive and negative are going to come together. The like are going to repel. If I have two positives, they're going to repel. If I have two negatives, they're going to repel. But opposites attract. Now, obviously, we know the purpose of bonding is obviously for atoms to have a complete valence shell. That's what they strive to do is usually get those eight outermost electrons. And that's the reason why they, they hunt out bonding. So they can look like they have eight valence electrons. Now, for example, when we talk about ionic bonding, this usually happens between a metal and a nonmetal. That's one of those things that you got to learn is that it, an ionic bond between a metal and a nonmetal. Why? Well, remember we talked about that. Metals usually tend to want to lose while um, nonmetals tend to want to gain because they're almost to that full shell. That's why when we talked about um, the a periodic table, how group one and group seven or group 17 are going to be really close friends. Group one wants to lose one. Group 17 wants to gain one. They're going to bond. They're going to form an ionic bond. So let's take a look at here. Sodium is a very soft metal that loses one electron. So now it has a positive charge because it's losing 
that electron. It's bye-bye, get rid of that negative friend, and now I become more positive, which makes it a cation. Makes sense? Now, chlorine, on the other hand, is a nonmetal yellow gas that wants to take or gain one electron. Well, if it's gaining more electrons, it's obviously gaining more negativity, so it's going to have a negative charge. And obviously, it's going to make it an anion. Now, again, we talked about bonding. When we have bonding, and it creates a different, or when it creates a compound, it has different properties than it, the properties of its by itself. Again, sodium has a very different property than it does when it's in sodium chloride, which is a bond, okay? Which is simply a harmful and harmless, actually, table salt. We use it all the time, okay? You may have used it this morning on your breakfast burrito. I don't know, okay? But chlorine and sodium on their own, very dangerous. But when brought together, they form different properties and they create something that we can actually ingest. All right, so let's go ahead and grab number six and seven. I'll give you about 30 seconds to get that one in. I'll give everybody just a couple more seconds. I know you have to write out positive and, and cation, negative and anion. So I'll give you a little bit more time here. Not a worry. And again, like I said, an ionic bond only happens between a metal and a nonmetal. Only happens between a metal and a nonmetal. That's what's unique about the ionic bonds. If you see something like this and you take a look at it and break it down, you know sodium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal, that I know this is going to be an ionic bond. Okay. All right, let's take a look here. So Zadine, Kitali, Valerie, and Taylor. Mateo and Mariah, Logan and Lizzie, Junior and Jason G, uh, Emmanuel, Gavin, Evelyn, Elijah, Damian, Chris, Alex and Alden. Make sure we get those hands up there. All right, perfect, perfect. Let's go ahead now and kind of just look at um, how ionic bonds happen between two, traction between um, cations and anions. And again, because metals and nonmetals are either can either gain or lose, that's where you're going to get your cation and anion. So it's going to be between those oppositely charged ions. So let's take a look at my little graphic here. So when I take a look at sodium, sodium actually, and this is what's interesting about ionic bonds, it's a complete giving of that electron, okay? An ionic bond is a complete giving of the electron. And we're going to talk about that other bonds where they actually share. But in ionic bonds, it actually completely gives up that electron. So sodium, since it only has one valence electron, actually gives it to chlorine. There's the bond. So it's going to actually completely give that electron to chlorine, which only needs one more to be a complete valence shell. And so obviously what we get here is a positive sodium ion because it gave up that electron. And we have a negative chlorine ion or um, chloride ion that is taking in that one, so it's going to be slightly more negative. And you have now sodium chloride. There's your bond, okay? It's so a couple of different things about ionic bonds. First thing, it happens between a metal and a nonmetal, okay? An attraction between those oppositely charged ions. Number two, it is a complete giving of that electron, a complete giving of that electron. So two things that you need to remember about these ionic bonds. And trust me, when we start, start talking about other bonds, it will make more sense. So now, let's review uh, metals and nonmetals. And like I said, this is going to be something that we already just talked about, so it's a complete review. We know that metals tend to want to give up one to three valence electrons. It's much easier for them to lose those electrons, right? because they only have one to three, where underneath they have a nice full shell. So therefore, metals tend to be cations because they are giving up those electrons. Now on the flip side, nonmetals tend to want to gain. They want to gain, they already have five to seven valence electrons, so they're 
willing or out there shopping for one to three valence electrons. So for them, it's easier for them to gain those electrons. Therefore, nonmetals tend to become anions because they are taking in electrons because they're almost full. Does that make sense? So now what we're going to do next is we're going to complete this on our own. We're going to talk about the cation, the anion, and the ionic bond. Okay. Now the ionic bond, I'm going to tell you right now, no answers in the public chat, but the ionic bond has one answer. Okay. It has one answer. A cation and an anion has two answers. So I'll put that right here. So that means it has two answers, has two answers, and this has one answer. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to you, okay? I'll give you a good 45 seconds to work on this. When you are finished, raise your hand. If you have a question, let me know if you want to check it, whatever it may be. Go ahead and um, let me know. But again, 45 seconds. When you are finished, go ahead and raise your hand. Go, go, go. All righty. Who needs another, like another 30 more, 30 more seconds? Okay. Yeah, no worries, Jasmine. Okay. I'll give you everybody another 30 se more seconds. Not a problem. We're okay. We're Excellent on time, really. Excellent on time. We're actually going to be getting out a little bit early today. So nice job, everybody. Good, Nat. That's correct. Yep. Good. Excellent. Nice job. Again, when you are finished, don't forget to raise your hand. Um, hope I'm checking on that right now. Yep. Good, Cheyenne. That's correct, Cheyenne. All right. Excellent. I think you all did an excellent job here. Let me go ahead and um, get everybody out of here. In the meantime, let me do something really, really quickly. And... I apologize. Keep on working if you're working. Give you a little extra time here. All right. And then hope, like I said, I'm checking on that right now. So don't leave until... I check on that. All right, so let's go ahead and clear ourselves out of here. Excellent job, everybody. Super proud of you. Today, we reviewed calculating the overall charge of an atom, cation and anion, and we explained what those mean. We explained how ionic bonds are formed. Remember, ionic bonds, two things. They're between a metal and a nonmetal. Second thing is that there is a complete giving of that electron, a complete giving of that electron. We explain how metals and nonmetals lose and gain valence electrons. Again, super review right there, but that's why they are an ionic bond. Okay. So with that being said, if you can go ahead and submit your notes right now, once you've submitted your notes, you are free to go. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye, Jasmine. Bye. Um, Bye, Nat. Bye, Jackie.